You are going to learn how to read structured drawings and specifically columns for this particular video. Let's first clearly understand what columns mean. So this is a column. It is a structural member designed to support weight of the building and create safe load path transferring the weight and the forces applied to the structure of the building to the foundation and ground. For example, if a person is standing or walking on this slab here, the person's live load is transferred from the slab to the beam then from the beam to the columns, then from the columns to the bases or pads here. Then finally the loading is transferred into the soil or rock. After casting mass concrete here in the bottom which acts as concrete blinding, we mark the position of each column with the help of grid lines and lime like this on top of the mass concrete blinding, just the same way it is according to the drawing. For example, this is footing 1 with column C2E here, column C3 here and column C4 here. Even physically on ground, this is the same footing 1 with column C2E here, column C3 here and column C4 here. We mark these columns with lime mixed with water. We mark the lines using a concrete nail. We place these columns exactly in these markings. According to the drawing, it details that these data bars are of thickness H16, code 20, what is most important is the bar thickness which is 16, then it details that this bar will be at 425 millimeters and that's what we exactly did on ground. This is 425 millimeters with H16 steel bars. These steel bars must be on plumb and straight and must be following the grid lines. The grid lines are important because they show the exact position of the columns. For example, this is column C2 that runs along this grid line B1 on the drawing and that's how we exactly did it on ground. This is grid line B1 and this is column C2. These are its details. This 8 simply means we are supposed to look for section 8 from all other sections and here it is. 4 H16 steel bars with code 26 and 2 H12 steel bars with code 29. This code simply shows us where our steel bars start from and end from with R8 code 25 links or ties at a spacing of 150mm center to center. It details that this column is of size 200mm by 200mm with 30mm spacer blocks or concrete covers and then at these four corners you can see that these are H16 steel bars and then these are two H12 middle bars. That's how we exactly did it on ground. These are four H16 steel bars at these four corners and these are two H12 middle bars on the sides here. These starter bars or stab columns will be at a height of 770 millimeters above the structural slab level. When casting concrete for the columns, always be sure to include hoop iron and cast it together with the columns just like this. These are two pieces of hoop and running to directions where the masonry wall will be, which means our wall will be running along this direction and also along this direction. These are concrete covers or spacer blocks. This is form work to the columns. After casting concrete for these columns, we chisel out something small to bring out the hoop iron. We tie hoop iron in columns at a distance for every three courses. Similarly, when you are working on a large project like this one or in case you need a stronger connection between columns and masonry block work, be sure to always use H8 steel bars instead of hoop iron. These are main column bars and these are the H8 steel bars for masonry enforcement to create a connection between the columns and the block wall. After casting concrete for the columns, we do the shattering and pull out these steel bars like this Hoop iron starts from here as it goes this direction. After casting concrete for each slab before casting concrete for another column, cast concrete for the kicker or column starter. For example, for this particular column C4, it details that we are supposed to have a 75mm kicker. The column is of dimensions 400 by 200 and this is the formwork for our kicker. This timber piece is 400mm along the length and 200mm along the width and height as 75mm. We hit with concrete nails so as to make it firm though not so deep. After that, mix cement with water and pour here. 
cast concrete of the same grade as for the column so if our column is of grade 25 we cast the kicker with the same mix ratio as for the column when reshattering the next day we remove the nails and hit here we also hit here to remove the frame this is our final product as it is in the drawing this is 75 millimeters here this is also 75 millimeters here make a kicker for every column on every level which means you make kickers for all columns at this level underground on the first floor on the second floor on the third floor as you go up among other floors be sure to also leave extra 770 millimeters above the slab where the next column will start from for example steel bars from the stub columns come from underground and stop here Grand floor steel bars start from the kicker here and also go up up to 770 millimeters above the second floor slab second floor column steel bars start from here up to here these also start from here up to here for this particular column c5 this is its section in this shape these are 6 h16 code 2 rebars also tied with links of h8 code 32 at a spacing of 150 millimeters center to center even physically it will look like this these are 6 h16 steel bars these are h8 links at a spacing of 150 millimeters center to center that's the end of this video about how to read the structured drawings for columns. I hope you get something from it. Watch this next video about how to read the structured drawings for the ground beam and how to build a ground beam.